Hello YouTube and welcome to our second webisode. We've got plenty to show you guys today. Today we're here in uh, Joshua Tree, California. And it's beautiful out here as you can see behind me. We've got these lovely Joshua trees. We're gonna be taking some wonderful landscape shots today. Uh, today we're gonna learn how to use our histogram and we're gonna learn how to use our metering modes on our camera. So if you are new to that or have no clue what I'm talking about, don't worry, we're gonna show you how to use that. You'll become pros in no time. Uh, today I'm going to be shooting with my 7D again. I switched out my lenses today. Uh, we will be shooting with a 24 to 70. I may switch to a wide angle lens. It depends on where we're at and what we're shooting. Uh, so today we're going to learn, uh, we're going to apply everything that we learned last time in our last webisode and we're going to include today our histogram and metering mode. Uh, those are essential to exposing, getting proper exposures for all of your shots. So grab your cameras and let's go ahead and start shooting. Okay, so we're gonna learn about our histogram today. It's one of the fourth elements that is needed to take uh, great photos, uh, properly exposed photos, should I say. Uh, you have your ISO, your shutter speed, uh, and your aperture, and your fourth one is your histogram. A lot of people will say, yeah, you need your histogram to expose properly. Other people will be like, so long as you do those three, you'll be fine. Um, I like to reference my histogram to make sure I got good lighting and that I'm not overexposed or I'm not underexposed. So that histogram is on the back of your camera. It, at one point or another, you probably run across it by accident or on purpose and thought to yourself, well, maybe I'll use this, maybe I'll never will. Um, you, you probably discard it. Well, it kind of looks like this right here. So that is your histogram. What your histogram does, it shows you if you've got too much darks, too much lights, all those things. So let's talk about that for a second. Okay, so let's talk about your histogram and what it is. Your histogram is raw light data in the form of a graph which tells you about your blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. It is also responsible for telling you if you've lost data due to overexposing or underexposing your images. Uh, a couple of things to remember when using your histogram. Uh, the left endpoints tell you about how much contrast is in your image. Uh, midpoints is all your midtones and the right side tells you about your exposure. I've got a cave behind me which uh, is perfect. It's got a lot of darks and on top you have the rocks and the sky which creates a lot of whites. So we will overexpose and underexpose our photos just to see how our histogram moves uh, all the way from the left to the right, okay? Let's take a couple of shots. I want you guys to remember that when using your histogram it is only a tool and not a limit on your creativity. Uh, the name of the game here normally is to keep the graph between the two endpoints as if you go over those endpoints then you lose uh, your data that you can otherwise obtain uh, or get back during post production. Uh, this is also known as clipping. made it to the top of this rock here in Joshua Tree, California. Um, it is absolutely gorgeous out here. If you guys live in California, any of my subscribers, um, come and visit this place. It's fantastic to take pictures. And if you're visiting overseas, you ever come over here, take a visit here. Uh, you won't regret it. It's, it's beautiful out here. Uh, we're really at the edge of this rock here. If you can poke your head down there and check it out. So yeah, it's a little creepy being up here. So I'm a little, uh, scared of heights I guess I, I what do you call it it's my phobia from being up too high anyway uh, we're gonna talk about our final uh, lesson for today and that is our metering modes uh, we have four metering modes to choose from your evaluative metering is 
everything. It takes into consideration all the light, the darks and shadows, and your camera does all the calculations itself to determine what is the best exposure. Uh, you also have your partial metering, which is, is your, your partial metering only takes up a certain percentage of your image in the center. Uh, and it'll only calculate what's in the middle there. So it won't consider everything else, just what's in the certain radius. Um, and I believe that's only 9% of your image that it will take into consideration when giving you a proper exposure. Then you have your spot metering, which only takes up 3% of your image and will concentrate on a certain spot of your picture, wherever you're pointing the camera, and will um, give priority to that center um, part wherever your camera is focused on and focus on that. Then finally you have your center weighted metering. Uh, your center weighted metering uh, takes into consideration some of the background and some of the foreground if you're shooting your, shooting your subject. The ones that I use are partial and spot metering. Uh, I don't use too much of evaluative metering, maybe on days like this. I didn't use it today, but you could use your evalu evaluative metering mode on uh, landscape shots. It just depends on what kind of shot you get. The more novice um, photographers, landscape photographers, uh, they probably don't use uh, too much of the partial metering. They may use the evaluative metering, uh, but in my case, I, I don't use it that much. Uh, so I hope you guys learned a lot from uh, these uh, these tutorials, and I hope that you guys learned what metering mode is and what your histogram does. Uh, if you have any more questions, please email me. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you need to go back and repeat this video, please do so. I know sometimes it can be a lot to learn the first time, and we also have. Uh, the last episode that we filmed was uh, I, your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter. So make sure you guys take into consideration everything that we learned back then and apply it to uh, what I'm showing you today. So uh, if you have any questions, like I said, email me, get back to me. Until then, thank you guys and have a wonderful week and we'll see you next episode.